This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I have um, I have a very important uh, job in my life uh, to go and to scream to let everyone know something that is uh, supposed to be obvious, supposed to be simple. You know, not every person can do everything in this world. Let's say if you if you want to work on your on on your on your body on your health let's say you want to work on 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 your on your uh, eating habits so you need to spend a few hours or one hour this 10 15 minutes every day to learn about it a little bit and also you need to spend some time in your day to think about yourself means how the food that you're eating is affecting your life if really those changes that you made are good for you or not and you, you need to develop certain awareness about your eating habits if you want to work on them and then if really you want to change your diet so you need to go to certain stores and to buy certain products so you need to have a certain amount of money maybe it will be more expensive to change your diet maybe you cannot eat the cheap junk food that you're eating before maybe now you want to buy things that will be in higher quality maybe a little bit more pricey so you need also to come up with money maybe something that will require more time from your day to invest in and then to go to different stores maybe not the closest ones to your house maybe you need now to travel a little bit more and also then after you came and you learned that whatever if you want to really work on your diet, so it's it going to take some time from your day to work on it. And if you want to work on your shape, you want to go to the gym, you want to jog, you want to run, you want to lift some weights, you want to work out on your... Some, oh, so it's going to take some time from your day. You must or else you cannot do, you cannot change. If you want to focus in anything in your life, it must take some time of your day. So a person doesn't have, no one got enough time in his lifetime to do everything. You cannot. You need to see what is more important. For an example, a person that wants to come closer to Hashem, to the Creator, and he decides, okay, I want to learn Torah. I want to learn from the Bible, I want to learn Torah Shebaal Peh, I want to learn from Talmud, I want to learn... Okay, so how much time you have in the day that you can invest in learning? Let's say that you feel that you have three hours, four hours, eight hours, twelve hours, whatever. Depends on how much money you have, if you can support your family, if your family are even happy at all and willing that you will go and learn. You, certain things in your life that can interrupt your learning and also can support your learning, whatever. But there is only a certain amount of time that in that time you can achieve only so and so and not more than that. You have five hours every day to learn, so it's great. So one hour you can learn Gemara, one hour you can learn Shulchan Aruch, the rules, the Jewish rules, great, wonderful. Another one hour you're going to learn Chumash, you're going to say Shnai Mika Ve'echad Targum, great, three hours, an hour, another hour you have, you can say Tikkun Aklal, you can say Tehillim of the day, you can, fourth hour, great, now you want to learn a little bit more about Parashat Shavua, you want to learn a little bit more about Zohar HaKadosh, you want to say Mishnayot, okay, finished, now what about Chasidut? And what about other books that you that are in the shelf? That so many other things, options that you you can learn. When you're gonna sit and learn Talmud Yerushalmi, the Talmud that comes from Jerusalem, maybe you have other books of that other authors wrote. Maybe about peace in the house. Maybe about educating your children. When you're gonna find time for all of those? So. In five hours, you can learn only a certain amount. And I remember myself, I was learning and in, in, in a certain period of time. So there was the, the rabbi that I was learning 
he was guiding us to learn in as many books as we can every day. In a certain period of time in my life, that, that was the way that I was learning. In different times of my life, I was focusing on other, in other ways, in other methods. I was just focusing on certain two, three books every day, and I would learn only from them. But in that time, I remember that that rabbi was, was, that was teaching us, he said that he was very strong on that and inspiring us to learn in as many books as we can. And I didn't realize that that guiding was very wrong for me in that time. Maybe for you today it's great, maybe you have time, but I was already married and I was also having, th I had three children back then, I think. And except of that, I had also every day to go and run to find some money to support my house, to pay the bills and the rent and whatever. And I didn't have enough time. So every night, because of that very strong and powerful motivation of that rabbi to push us to learn as much as we can, that it sounds amazing, it sounds perfect, but I was always nervous. Because I was always feeling that I'm not fulfilling my obligation. And every moment that I had to spend with my children was a moment that I was reducing from my learning. And I felt like my children are taking from my time of learning. And if my wife was talking to me in those days, for sure it was so horrible. So something is wrong with that guiding, not because that to learn from as many books as you can is a wrong guiding, but you need to put it in proportion. It's true, you need to learn from as many books as you can. Okay, great, but it might be that the number that you can learn from is only two. <laughs> and it's also okay. And it means a lot. It means that if you really learn from those two books today, you, you, you fulfilled your obligation, you achieved what that you've been sent to do. Because if you're not going to listen to that, like that I was not listening to that, to my inner voice, to my deep understanding of reality. I was ignoring my feelings. I was ignoring my family. I was ignoring my children and my wife. And it brought me to a place that after years of my life, I, uh, I, I, I had to pay back for those times and, and, and to rethink about all of my life. So, okay, there is no doubt that in those years I, I learned in many, many books and I learned hundreds or thousands of pages and I'm happy that I had that merit but I lost a lot in my relationship and in my closeness to my family and this is something that I don't know if I can ever repair if I can fix it even certain periods of times like those in your life can bring your house to such problems that uh, children can go off the way that the relationship with the wife or with the rest of the family will never going to be the same. Certain mistakes that we do in life can be uh, unforgivable. Sometimes your partner can look at you and, and just to feel that he doesn't have a partner anymore. And you think to yourself, no, I was just trying to do the best that I could and I was just hoping to achieve good things, but when you just follow the advice of people, and they can be great people, they can be amazing people, inspiring people, powerful people, successful people. But when you ignore your own heart, sometimes you lose everything that you have. So a person can do only as much as he can. So about myself, I wanted to say that I'm going and teaching a certain concept that is very close to my heart, that is very welcome, that is very important to me, and I'm, I'm teaching it because it's close to my heart. And there are many other people, many other teachers, rabbis, that can go and teach on other topics, on other issues, and their lectures can be as great and as important. But me, I have a certain job. And like I said, sometimes it's a little bit weird because it seems to be like that the issue that I'm talking about is supposed to be clear to everyone. Everyone's supposed to understand it. You don't, we're not supposed to discuss those things. It's, those are very simple things from the foundation of, of faith. 
even before that we're talking about the Torah, simple creation, simple person with, with simple faith, supposed to understand those things. When we're talking about faith in the Creator, we're talking about faith in someone that is above nature. And this is a point that I am, am willing to, to reveal to the world. And even though that it sounds like, okay, simple, what are you talking about? It's like, we know, the Almighty, the Creator, Hashem, Elohim, God, of, of course, is above nature. Nature doesn't go and, and, and can, can, nature cannot control Hashem. Hashem is above nature. He's above this creation. All of those words, all of those concepts, all of those theories can be said from every mouth. But really to live that message, really to, to walk with that understanding, this is the real success. This is the result of real learning of that topic, of, of having complete faith in Hashem. To have complete faith in Hashem is to understand that the physicality of your life, the limitations of your life, the constrictions of your life, they are the creation. They are what the Hashem Barach made in this world. And actually we are not from this world at all. Just we are now behind that wall of creation. After the, the Creator created this world and He sent our souls to that dimension, to this physical world, so now we need to play under that rule system of physicality, of nature. Sunrise, sunset, weights, colors, senses, all of the physical measurements and, 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 and constrictions and limitations of, of, of physicality. But the truth is that our soul is not really belong to this place at all. We're coming from a place that is above place. Now, as believers, as people with faith, we must connect ourselves to that inner point of our being, to the essence of our being, to the purpose of, of our creation, to break all of our... Um, all of our... We need not to follow the, the false thoughts of us that are telling us from inside that we belong to this world. Means that if in a certain time of the day you feel that you're in a rush because in traffic it's going to take you at least one hour and a half to make that distance, so it's wrong. So now, I'm not guiding you to, to open your wings and fly or to rise with your soul to another dimension and to... We're talking in reality. In reality, you are forced to live under the rules of nature, yes. But you must always remember that those rules of nature are the rules that the Creator is setting for you in life. Really, the truth is that all of those rules of nature are only an illusion. It's our prison. It's not reality. People are scared. A student of mine asked me a question. I'm in a, in a relationship. I think that I, I find many qualities in that guy. I think I, he's a good person to marry with. But I'm not sure that I want to. But I'm afraid to break that relationship. So what should I do? So that's a, that's that's a, that's a good question. It's a crazy question. It's a it's it's a question that based on so many fears, it's a question that is coming from such a wrong place in life to even think about having a relationship with a person that you don't know that you want to live with him forever. It's such a wrong thought. It's such a twisted thought, and I'm not criticizing. I don't have negative thoughts on that person that asked that question. I understand completely where is she coming from. She's coming from her fears. 
because she afraid that if she gonna say no to this relationship, so who is promising her that she gonna find the better shiduch, that she gonna find someone better than that guy to marry? Okay, I understand. Those are all foreign thoughts that contradicts faith. Faith is to believe in the Creator that He is above nature. Under the rules of nature, you have certain number of people in the universe, certain number of people that the matchmakers can offer you in a day, in a month, in a year, in your community, in your area, with your language, with your background. Yeah, under nature you have many numbers, many, many dividings, but they're still limited. But when your faith is above nature, when your basic way of thinking is coming from that place that you understand that there is someone that is above nature and he is creating nature, he is putting those matchmakers and he is putting those people to offer and he is making certain time in the day for those phone calls to take place in your life and he is the one that is building that amazing structure of your life, you can understand that in a moment in a blink of an eye, he can change the numbers and he can change the odds and he can change reality corresponding to his will. And you can never think that his will will be that you will work and serve out of fear because he wants you to be happy and the Creator, he wants you to be satisfied. And if your fears are leading you to take decisions in your life, it means that you're not following Hashem. You're following your fears. If fears are the reason why you're learning Torah because you're afraid not to learn, don't learn. That's not the reason to learn Torah. That's not the, the reason. If you're keeping Shabbat because that you're afraid to be punished, I'm sorry, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I will never gonna keep Shabbat because I'm afraid not to keep Shabbat. That's not the reason to keep Shabbat. It's not a reason. Hashem, how Hashem offered Shabbat, how Hashem told us about Shabbat, what Hashem said, I have a great treasure, a gift that is hidden in my treasures and its name is Shabbat and I want to give it to you. Okay, now, are you afraid of the gifts of Hashem? It's a gift. So maybe you misinterpret that gift. Maybe people that told you, maybe your life experience was very bent, very twisted. Maybe if after years of exile in darkness, being prosecuted and, 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 and destroyed and demolished in years of exile, maybe after all those thousands of years of darkness, we lost our connection to the real holiness and purity of the seventh day of Shabbat. So maybe we don't understand what Shabbat is all about. But to keep on nurturing that fear, keep on being observant and orthodox and frum because of our fear not to be punished from Shabbat, it's just to come back to the main mistake, to the first sin of our first mother Eve, Chavai Menu, that she made that mistake. She made that mistake because she, it's written that Chavai Menu, she, she wanted to be very righteous she never heard the prophecy of Hashem. The prophecy of Hashem was to Adam Arishon, to the first man. Hashem told him not to eat from that certain fruit of that certain tree, the, the, the tree of knowledge. And he, Adam Arishon, or that, I don't know, I, 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 I read two, two explanations on what that he said, or that he really guide her properly, exactly in the same words like that Hashem told him not to eat from that fruit, or that he was too strict with her and he told her, listen, like that we know that the Rabbanim, the rabbis, the teachers are guiding us to make one step back, to create a fence that we won't fail in the, in the sin itself. So before that she will take from that fruit and eat from it. So he warned her and told her, listen, Hashem said, don't touch the tree. It, it was not the real guiding of Hashem. But maybe the first man told his wife to protect her out of his goodwill. Listen, 
don't touch the tree. Hashem said, don't touch the tree. Even though that Hashem said, don't eat from the fruit of the tree, but maybe the first man was protecting his wife and telling her, listen, don't eat from, don't touch the tree. Don't get into troubles at all. Stay away from the tree. Don't touch it. He, okay. He was protective. Or that he told her, listen, Hashem said, don't eat from the fruit. And she wanted to protect herself. She felt like it's going to be better for me. I know I'm not allowed to eat from it. I rather to keep myself away. And when she came into that argument with the snake that was offering to her to eat from, the tree, from that fruit, so she said, we're not allowed to touch the tree. So or that she was def protecting herself, or that her husband was protecting her. In both of the ways, it sounds good. It sounds that that's okay. They were trying only to protect themselves. But the result was that after that, the snake pushed her to touch the tree, and she saw that nothing happened to her by touching the tree. Now, that assumption is strengthening the assumption, that the explanation that we said, that the first man told her not to touch the tree. Because now, after she said, I'm not allowed to touch the tree, and she touched the tree, she saw that nothing happened to her. And then by that, that she saw that she didn't been, that she have not been punished on touching the tree, she realized that she maybe can eat and not to be punished on that as well. And then she ate from the fruit. So when you're going to force a person today to keep Shabbat out of fear, you're going to tell him you don't know the punishments. You don't know how horrible it is. If you're going to violate Shabbat, if you're going to turn on the light in Shabbat, you don't know what's going to happen to you. Hashem going to kill you. Hashem going to destroy you. you. You will die. Whatever. You're going to terrify that kid. When he will be 16, he one time going to touch the switch and going to turn off the light in Shabbat and he's going to see that nothing happens to him in life. And nothing going to happen to him if he's going to turn off the light in Shabbat. Nothing at all. So he will say to himself, okay, so all the rest is in the same basket. It's all nonsense. And only because that you terrified him and you forced him to keep Shabbat out of fear. And you didn't explain to him that Shabbat is a gift. And you didn't brought happiness to the Shabbos table and you were not celebrating with him and you were not sharing on your happiness and how great it is for you to keep Shabbat. And why in the first place you decided to keep Shabbat? You just told everyone, we're not violating Shabbat, don't touch the lights, don't do this, don't do that. Now, it's a recipe for failure. It's a complete, complete failure and it's 100% failure because you cannot build things based on, on fears. Fears are meant to be destroyed because we're not people that wants to be afraid. We're people that wants to be happy. So if you also in that way that you're teaching your children, in that way that you're teaching all of your family, but also in that way that you're teaching yourself, if you're going to always follow advice of people that are terrorizing you, that are terrifying you. You don't know what's going to happen to you if you're not going to learn, what's going to happen to you if you're not going to guard your eyes, if you're not going to go to the mikveh, if you're not going to eat kosher, if you're not going to keep Shabbat, if you're not going to go to Uman Rosh Hashanah, if you're not going to this, if you're not... People are going to Uman every year for years and years. I know people. Going to Uman, flying to Uman, to the grave of that huge righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Westev, every year only because they're afraid not, that they won't have cancer. They, they heard some stories on people that went for 10 years, for 12 years, for 18 years, and one year they stopped, one year they didn't go to Uman, cancer, that's it. So now they're terrified and they will fly every year to Uman. Not because that they really believe in that righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, just because they don't want to have cancer. That's not the reason to go to Uman in Rosh Hashanah. If you're afraid not to go to Uman because you're afraid to have cancer, I tell you, don't go. Don't go. From that reason, don't go. <laughs> you must see that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is not cruel. If you really want to be in touch with Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, so you must understand that he's a merciful leader, that he's a righteous man. 
And if you don't count on His righteousness, if you don't believe in His kindness, in His love to His followers, to His children, to His beloved ones, to His students, and you think to yourself that He is a person that is punishing everyone that is not coming because that His issue is Rosh Hashanah, you don't understand Rabbi Nachman of Breslev at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. And the same about Shacharit, and the same about Milcha, and about Mayriv, and about putting Tefillin. If you think that because you haven't go, haven't went to the synagogue to pray Mayriv, the, the evening prayer, and now you're going to be executed because of that, so something is wrong with your faith. You know, who are you serving? Are you serving a vicious, cruel leader? That's who you're, 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 you're serving? Someone that will kill you, will destroy you because of your mistakes. And if you didn't go to the synagogue because that your wife really needs you, because that your friend is stuck with a flat tire, and you did, or that you are so tired after a horrible day, and, 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 and you can't find the brain and the power to drag yourself out of the house to the synagogue. Now, people don't understand it. People don't understand the way that the rules of, of the Torah are, 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 are going. What is the real will of Hashem? In Hilchot Filah, in the rules of prayer, it's written that, for an example, a person that is praying without an intention, so you cannot his, call his prayer a prayer. And it's written... That if a person is praying with no intention, he needs to pray again to fix that prayer. So if you know about yourself that you don't have the ability to pray with the right intention, means to aim to the intention of the words of the prayer. Really to aim those sentences that are written, the blessings. If you're not able to say that, so you cannot do it properly. Because all of your blessings will be just brachot lebatala. It will be useful, useless, I'm sorry. It will be useless. It, it, it won't carry the right intention. And then it's saying, so think about it a little bit. It's written that if a person that if a person is bothered or that he doesn't have the ability to pray, so he should pray only the first bless three blessings and mention the middle blessings, just to mention their, their topics, the issues, and to pray the last three blessings, and by that he will fulfill his, his obligation to pray. Now, I, I didn't wrote that. It's a Rambam. So now you can come and say, no, we're not following the Rambam today. Okay, great, wonderful, don't follow the Rambam. I'm not telling you to follow the Rambam. I'm just trying to learn with you. Okay, so we need to learn from a different rabbi. Who is that rabbi that is greater than the Rambam, that we should follow him? I don't know. The Rambam is saying that if you're coming from the way, it means that you took a flight from Israel to United States, from Europe to, to Israel, I don't know, and you're now bothered. You came to the airport, you were looking for your suitcases, or that you drove, like I drove. I drove from California, from Los Angeles to New York. It took us 52 hours driving. We came back destroyed. We were so tired. What's the Alakha is saying? The Alakha is saying that a person that comes from the way and his mind is off, is not able to focus in his prayer, he needs to take two or three days until he will settle his mind and then he can go and pray. Two days off from synagogue? Two days off from Shachrit? Two days off from Mincha? Two days off for my Oh, Rambam, not Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, not Dro Moshe Kasuto. Rambam in the prayers of, of in the in the rules of, of prayers in Ilchot Fila. Rambam. It's not me making up stories for you. It's Rambam. This is what the Rambam is saying. 
So now let's say that you found yourself that you were not able. Don't follow that guiding. Don't. Chas v'shalom. Don't listen to that. It's, don't listen to the Rambam. Are you crazy to follow the Rambam? Shugaim. Chas v'shalom. Crazy. Chas v'shalom. Now, but if you found yourself that you were not able to, to pray in a certain day, you want to pray every day, great. You want to do as much as you can, great, amazing. I'm, with you. I'm also doing that. I'm also trying to pray in every opportunity. When I came back to New York, I was praying my in that day. I was praying Shacharit in the next day. I was praying Mincha in the next day. I was praying my in the na- a day later. Every day I'm doing everything that I can, no doubt. I'm trying to do as as much as I can. But if I'm failing, at least, if one time I didn't pray my riv, if one time I was, I don't know what happened to me and I couldn't pray shacharit and I just put filin later in that day, I will not going to hate myself for that. I'm not going to blame myself on it. I'm going to try to understand that the Creator is with me and he is not a cruel leader that is standing with a baseball bat waiting to put it on my head. That's not reality. That's not the truth. That's Lashon Ara. Those are bad words on the Creator. To think that this is that one that you're serving, he's that one that is punishing you. He's that one that is hating you. He's that one that is rejecting your prayers. It's all false. It's not faith. It's foreign faith. It's, it's you're worshiping and following your fears and other people's fears instead of following the good creator that loves you, that cares about you, that is building you, that gives you. So now you're going to say, but what with all of the hard things? What with all of the judgments? What with all of the difficulties? What with all of the pain and the sorrow that a person experiences in his life? What, is it not coming from Hashem? It's written that it's all coming from Hashem. Yes, but who told you that it's coming as punishments? Who told you that Hashem Midbarach is punishing you? Me, for an example, I know that from my failures I learned so much. So much I learned. I know that today I have tools to deal with people and to save lives of people if it's in my lectures or if it's in the private meetings that I'm having with people. If in those situations I wouldn't have my life experience that I'm carrying on my back thousands of failures of downs, of sadnesses, of depressions, of sins, of crimes, on doing things against the will of Hashem, Horrible things that I've done in my life. If I wouldn't have that life experience, I wouldn't have the ability today to help so many people as I'm helping today. Because today I'm using my life experience as my wisdom. En chacham keval nisayon. The wisdom that a person have has is coming from his life experience. If now, for an example, you want to help some person that got addiction problems. He's addicted to drugs, to alcohol, to, to, to medicines, to, to, to painkillers, to whatever, to, to his phone, to, to every single thing that a person can be addicted to. He fell in that. Now you want to help him. And you are not an addicted person. You don't have that nature. You're, you're fine. You're okay. You're eating good. You're sleeping good. You're, you're running. You're doing some sports. You're, you're a healthy person. You're a healthy guy. Can you help him? You can't help him. Who can help him? I can help him. Why I can help him? Because I've been in those places. Because I also found myself many, many times in my life addicted to certain things and didn't know how to break out from those bad habits. Because I was also moving from one problem to the next and then falling back to the first and then trying to climb and falling to failing into the third and then again trying to recover myself and then realizing that I'm already connected to something in the back of my mind. And only because that I have those ties because I have those lackings and I made a huge effort in my life to set myself free from those bad negative patterns and, 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 and addictions in my life. So I know how to give an advice to another person because I found an advice that was useful for me. 
And I can also relate to his pain and to his sorrow and to his grief and to, and to his confusions and to understand how much he can struggle on certain things that a person that is far from all of those things a person that is an athlete with good habits, that is busy with sports and, and he's got hobbies and he's got a profession because his parents, they knew how to educate him, how to teach him. So when he finished school, he already had a diploma and he's got a job and they hired him and he works every day and he's got an amazing schedule and his wife, she's also healthy in her mind more or less and they're okay and they're fine. He cannot relate to those problems of that poor guy and who can someone that been in those places so now from your hard hours from your life trauma from your scars you can choose what to do with that you can or fall to sadness because of your lackings or that you can understand that this is your life journey and there's a purpose for it and Hashem knows why Hashem knows why you need to forget everything that you learn. And Hashem knows exactly why you cannot be consistent and working on, some th on one thing and to run with it for a few years. Hashem knows why. One day, in three years from now, in three months from now, in three minutes from now, suddenly you're going to have some phone call that's going to wake you up to understand that you can do something that no one else can do. Suddenly you're going to find your neighbor in trouble, you're going to find your, 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 your best friend in need, and you will find a way how to help him because of your life experience, because of your weakness, because of your lackings, because of your failures. And suddenly you're going to realize that those failures were not only scarring and, and wounding you and, and, and making you bleed and hurt so much, they were building a certain armor that is protecting you today from those things. I gave that example many times. If you're going to take a Bakhur Yeshiva, a guy that sits and learns in, in a Yeshiva from his early childhood, and you're going to take him on Sunday to the beach, in Miami Beach, Florida, put him in, in Shabbos afternoon, in Sunday afternoon, in the middle of, of the beach for 10 minutes, let him look to the sides for 10 minutes, one side to the other. Put him over there for 10 minutes. And then take him back, 15 years old kid, a good kid, a quality kid, a learner, an innocent kid, a sweet pearl. Put him now back after 15 minutes in Miami Beach in the sun of Sunday afternoon. Put him now back in the yeshiva. Can he learn? He cannot learn. He's not able to focus. Take that kid and put him in Times Square for 15 minutes. Take him from Flatbush to Times Square for 50 minutes. Put him over there in one of the holidays in Times Square for 15 minutes. Let him wander. Let him check the world for 15 minutes. And then take him back to the yeshiva. Can he focus? Can he open the books? He cannot. Why he cannot? Because he is so fragile and so delicate and so and so sensitive that that trauma of standing in Times Square or standing in North in, in the in Miami Beach will destroy him. Now take me, you can build me a house in Miami Beach <laughs> and I wouldn't care. You can put me for two weeks in Times Square and I'm not gonna distract my thought for a second from the purpose of my life. If you're going to take me to the wildest party, in an uh, after party, in a gay club in Amsterdam, in Shabbos, 3 a.m., I'm going to know exactly what they're supposed to do over there. I'm going to save lives over there. Why? Because I've been there already. And I saw that this place doesn't sell anything that I want. And it doesn't attempt me. Because I passed that test already. So how a person can pass those tests, if not by falling and failing in those tests first, and then recovering and thinking and rethinking about his life again and again and asking himself, okay, do I want to go to those clubs or I don't want to go? Do I want to go to the beach or I don't want to go to the beach? Do I want to 
go to the Times Square or I don't have anything to do in the Times Square. Only when you're coming to decisions that are separating you from the contamination of this world and waking you up and strengthening and stabilizing you to understand who you really are and who you want to be, only now you're strong enough to go back to those places. And this is the complete tshuva. A complete tshuva is that the person will go back, Rambam, not Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, not Rav Moshe Kasuto, Rambam HaKadosh, is telling you that the right, complete way to do tshuva is to have that ability to go back to those foreign places, to those places that you failed in those places, and to fix over there. So now, if you find yourself that you're still too sensitive to go back to those places, it means that you have not completed your tshuva yet. So me, as a person that is full of scars, full of wounds, full of pain, full of sorrow, full of hard, harsh, terrifying experiences in life, I know for sure what is the purpose of my life and I'm not scared not to be in the army, not to be in the war, not to be in the clubs, not to be in the beach, not to be in the part uh, in the forest parties, not to be under the effect of drugs even because I, I even have that experience to know that I can take my 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 mind somewhere else and, and to ignore the effect of, of drugs or alcohol, or whatever. The, the life experience giving you the power to deal with life. But it depends on your decision. How strong you want to be, and what's the purpose of your life, what you want to achieve from life. If from your hard hours you're falling to sadness, to depression, to despair, oh, again, I need to go through this pain, to go through those problems, you don't understand the simplicity of life yet. You still don't understand how much Hashem Midbarach is with you. To achieve complete faith, it's to understand that the Creator is with you always. Even if you find yourself in a club, even if you find yourself under the effect of alcohol or every other kind of drug, Hashem is with you over there. I know a friend of mine that found himself in Vegas after using cocaine for hours and that person he was in such a crazy place in his mind that he felt that in one second he's about to flip he's about to, to lose his mind completely he went to such crazy places with his thoughts consuming horrible drugs that destroy the brain of a person and he felt that he's about to lose his mind completely in Vegas, maybe four or five years ago. And then a thought came to that person's mind that he needs to do tshuva, that he needs to fix everything. And this is a person that was doing cocaine many times in his life. It wasn't the first time that you're going to say, okay, he doesn't know what happened. This is a person that used cocaine many times, that he knows exactly what happens to you when you take cocaine and how many days it takes you to land back and to come back to reality as much as you can come back to reality after using cocaine at all. And that person in that night when he was so close to lose his mind completely, a thought came to his mind that he needs to drop all of his past behind him and that he needs to do tshuva. And when he came to that thought, immediately he said all the effect of that drug, of the cocaine, just disappeared from his mind. And he said, it's impossible. This is something that never happened to him before. You cannot take cocaine and suddenly have a thought that will take away the effect of the drug. If you took it and it's in your blood, you're in a problem. And it's going to take you a few hours or a few days to come back to reality. But he saw completely that from the rock bottom of his life, from the darkest place that he came to, one thought took him out completely and he was completely sober and awake and aware to himself and he just took his stuff and went out from that casino and went back home and started working on his tshuva. And I met that person maybe two, three months after that experience in Jerusalem. 
And that person's life is totally different today. And because that Hashem changed nature for him. Because you think that nature takes place in your life. You think that if you took cocaine, it means something. You think that if you violate Shabbos, Shabbat, it means something. You think that if you're not doing, or yes, you do, you think that it means something. But it's only in your mindset. Really, the Creator is above nature. The Creator can take you to places with no above the, the, the rule system of creation. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't need to do good and that you can allow yourself to make nonsense from your life. The total opposite. Just, you need to build yourself based on your senses and on your awareness, self-awareness. Like that example that I said in the beginning. Read in as many books as you can, 15 books a day, 20 books a day. If you're going to start ignoring your life, your reality, if you're not going to take showers because of your learning, if you're not going to have good smell because of your learning, if you're not going to wash your clothing because of your learning, if you're not going to speak enough with your soulmate, if you're not going to spend time enough with your children, if you're not going to make sure to pay your bills on time, so what's the use of learning so many books every day? Where do you think that it's going to build you? To high floors? High floors can be established only on very strong and stable foundations. And if you don't build the foundations that this is your character, it's your sensitivity, it's your kindness, it's your patience to other people, it's your appreciation and gratitude to people that are cooking for you, that are washing for you, that are thinking about you, that are praying for you. If you don't have all those basics, how can you imagine even that you, by learning seven pages of Zohar HaKadosh every day, going to reach the heights? You're just going to fly like a kite with no string. You're just going to lose yourself in a world of confusions and distractions. And you're not going to have roots for your tree, for your trunk to, 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 to go deep and to bring from, from, from the ground good energy and, 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 and all that is required for your fruits to, to, to be ripe and, and to be sweet and colorful and satisfying. You're learning for yourself. You're learning because you want to be an angel. If Hashem, the Creator, would want to make you an angel, He would create you as an angel. He created you with a body, with emotional issues, with relationships with people, obligated to certain rules and certain, certain realities, in your, and, and you are there, and you have a work, you have a job over there. And you need to fix one tie after the next and to take care of one obligation after the next. And like we said before, a person got only a certain amount of time in every day. So you need to focus on the real important ones and not to run and to achieve and to do. Relax. Think with yourself what is in the peak of your priorities. What really is the most needed thing? What will really going to be the right thing, the real next step for you in life to develop, to grow, to succeed, really to be healthy in your mind, really to grow and to satisfy the Creator. The Creator is a loving parent, is a loving father. He's not a cruel leader with a, with a, with a, with a stick to hit you on your fingers if you're not learning well, if you're not coming in time, if you... Hashem is with you. Hashem is that one that woke you up today at 11 and didn't woke up you at, at 7 a.m. He's that one. The verses, the blessings that we're saying in the beginning of the day are saying that He is the one that wakes us up. So He woke you up today at 11. What do you want? You have a problem with that? You don't, why do you have a problem with yourself? Have a problem with him? Go talk to him about it. Tell him, listen, Hashem, what's going on? I'm waking up every day at 11. Suddenly you're going to have a thought. Okay, but you're not going to sleep ever before of 11 or before of 3. So what do you want from me, Hashem, going to tell you? I'm just trying to heal you. And it takes me 9 hours every night to heal you between 9 to 10. So try to go sleep earlier a little bit. 
Okay, now you have another problem. Hashem, but I cannot go to sleep. I have foreign thoughts. I'm very ADD. I'm losing my mind. I can't focus. I'm, I'm, I'm in with my phone. I'm in my thoughts. I'm in my fears. I can't go to sleep. I don't know what to do. Okay, great. Let's talk about it. Talk about it with Hashem. Please, Hashem, help me. I want to have better habits. What is making my thoughts to be so distracted? Why I cannot fall asleep? Why I cannot go to sleep? Why I'm so tense? Why I'm so afraid? What is all of that stress? Why I need to check if I lock the door seven times every night before I go to sleep? Hashem, what happened to me? Please wake me up. And if you're going to pray like that, simple, honest prayers, instead of judging yourself and criticizing, oh, I'm so crazy, I'm checking the door again, and again I'm checking the door, and what's going on with me? I'm a lunatic, I'm a psychopath, I'm sick in my mind, I hate myself, I can't stand. Relax. Maybe something happened. Maybe you lost your mind somewhere. Maybe try to go back to look for your lost. Maybe something really happened to you. Maybe you've been traumatized by something. Maybe really something hurt you. Maybe it was a movie. Maybe it was a screaming. Maybe it was a life period of time in your life that destroyed you mentally. Maybe. Let's deal with it. Take Hashem with you to your journey of finding the truth about yourself and heal yourself. Be positive about building and healing yourself from head to toe. From the beginning till the end. And don't try to hate yourself for one thing and to praise yourself. On the, okay, so I'm going to learn Zohar Kadosh. It's not the answer. It's not the answer. It's not the solution. The solution is to go back to the true vites, to come back. To come back to reality. To come back to the truth. To take care of yourself. To wash your face. To brush your teeth. To cut your fingernails. To take a shower. And then to start, okay, now I'm fresh. Now I can go. Now I can pray. If you're all filthy and you're not clean and you're not organized and you smell bad, you cannot go like that. It's not the right way. Work on your foundations. Work on your stability. Work on your basics. And then grow and develop. Pray for the things you want to achieve more. Ask for more and you will be answered because your prayers will be prayers of truth. And prayers of truth are the prayers that are being answered. And I bless you all to find true happiness and that you'll find the Creator in your prayers. Because when you pray from your heart, you can sense the supervision of the Creator while you're praying. While you talk to Hashem, suddenly Hashem is revealing Himself inside of your own words. You're going to say to Hashem, Hashem, I need you to help me in this. And suddenly you're going to understand that you actually said, Hashem, I want you to help me. On this, what is this? Let's say for an example, you pray, Hashem, I need you to help me in Shalom Bayit. Why? Why Shalom Bayit? Another person would say, Hashem, help me with my finance. Why? Why you mention peace in the house and he mentioned finance? Why Hashem put that word, peace in the house, in the first prayer of yours today? If you're going to pay attention to your prayers, you're going to understand that Hashem wants to answer you and also to teach you. Sometimes you want to pray on something and suddenly different words are coming out of your mouth. Pay attention. Be aware to your own prayers. Be aware to yourself. And then you will experience the godliness of Hashem. The Creator's presence in your life. His existence with you in real time, live. Thank you very much. Hashem will bless you. And I bless you from the bottom of my heart. Always to be happy and satisfied and successful. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.